Okay, right. Midfield line. Um, Stephen, you're up first. Okay. Uh, my, my midfield that, that, that I'm going with is uh, at left midfield, um, once again, the shape of my team, I'm trying to get the, the guys that, that, that really caused us problems into it. Um, so I'm going with Willie Annette at uh, Kilkeel. I know he played a wee bit in the forward line as well, but I always found that he dropped into that pocket and then he pretty much would just turn and wouldn't really think yeah. too much about passing. He would just run at you. Mm -hmm. And he, he is definitely somebody that I would have loved to have coached. So raw, so fast, could score a goal, just... He's the heart, the heartbeat of 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 of, of any Kilkeel team. So, uh, I I I would say that he has to be with a good shot of, of making this team. Um, at at centre midfield, uh, I'm going to go with Mark Robinson, uh, Garvey. Once again, um, a very solid player, um, and I would say a hard player, um. I always remember whenever Steno come to Cookstown um, and the battles that, that they had playing against each other at centre midfield. And they were actually very similar players. Uh, hard, v pretty direct whenever they needed to be, could put in a tackle and, and had a good range of passing as well. So I, I would go with, with Mark Robinson. At uh, right midfield, um, I, I always find that you need a couple of players in your team that are, are, are that wee bit different. And I maybe maybe these players won't play brilliantly for you every weekend, but actually whenever you want to win something and whenever you want to win the big games, you do need two or three players in your team that, that can do something a, a wee bit different. Uh, and I was torn between two players here, uh, Mark Crooks and, and Stuarty Smith. Um, and Cookie, Cookie, class player, uh, has, has played, played for a long time, has, has got, got all the skills and attributes that you would need uh, to, be, to be a top player. But just pipping him is, is, is Sturdy Smith. And probably the reason why is Sturdy has a corner, uh, so scores an awful lot of corners. Um, I think he's already probably 25 goals, maybe he got to 30 goals this season already. Always was getting you twenty goals a year at at least. Uh, there, there was a year he got forty, um, in, in in the Ulster Premier League. Um, just an absolutely class player. Uh, really frustrating to coach, and he was one of those players that you almost let him away with being lazy occasionally, or or just sitting in and taking a rest because. He, he could just pick up the ball then and go on a burst, go on a run and score you a goal out of nowhere. Um, so a wee bit of a maverick of a player, but but a class player, a, a guy that I would have hated to have played against. So so those are my three. Willie Annette, Mark Robinson and Sturdy Smith with, with Cookie just missing out at right midfield. That's fine, we'll go with three. Um, Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, my midfield. Um firstly centre midfielder. Um and the first player on my on my the team sheet um is Julian Lewis. Um obviously I've played with him for a number of years, but um seriously, seriously good player. So much energy, extremely naturally fit, you know, circle to circle, um, consistently brilliant. I mean he, he he would always at least a seven out of ten for performances. Um, you know, obviously, the last number of years he hasn't been hasn't been playing, and and but we actually have at times brought him in to play at certain tournaments or certain big games just to help us out. And he's come in and he's been the best player on the pitch. And um, we played IHL qualifiers, uh, IHL two qualifiers was it, uh, two years ago, and he and he hadn't played all season for us, and he came in and he was he was the best player in the tournament. Um, he is so athletic. Um, Technically very good, basics very good, never gave the ball away, so strong on the ball. Defensively very good as well, so um, he would be my centre midfielder. Um, right, funny, Stephen, I was with you in right midfield. Um, I, I had exact two names 
Stuart Smith or Mark Crooks because um, I think they're both seriously quality players. Crooksy was always the name in our team talks came up because his, his right to left drag cut our defence every single time. As much as we told Stuart McWilliams to try and push him wide, he always cut inside. But it, it is deceptively very, very good. And he and he incredibly skillful player, great bloke. But again, I, I Stuart Smith get, gets that position over him. Um, just over recent years, I've just seen him. I'm surprised he doesn't have a cap, to be honest. When you see some of the names of good caps, he is a real class act. Um, quick, strong, skillful. Um, marked him a number of times as well, and he always got the better of me. So uh, he, he would be my right midfielder. Um, left midfielder, I had Mark Robinson as well. I was at school. I lived in the same year at school with Mark Robinson. Um, he went to Wallace. He was at the end, so uh, and you played against him from... From a, a young young level, he um, class act, um, class class, very very talented boy, uh, but it probably in fact retired early, quite early. I mean, I can't remember how many, how many years he's been out of the game now, considering he's he's, he's my age. Um, but was always sort of growing up playing those those very very talented Irish under eighteens, under under sixteen teams. You know, he was one of the best players in that team, and that was a team with Mark Claycorns. And stuffing it, um, and yeah, I mean, just again, very technically, very good. Never give the ball away, and deceptively quick. So that's my my midfield is uh, Julian Lewis, Mark Robinson, and Stuart Smith. Cheers, Chris. Uh, Andy, you're up. Yeah, uh, so a couple of things for me. The first one is: Did Ross McCandless make it in the back four? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, then that's free because I had him in at right midfield. Because when at younger when he was cut that cut I mean I have notes here. He used to cut in from the right hand side against us towards the top of our circle. It was an absolute car crash when he did it. He was fantastic. So he's out of it, which is great because that can replace with somebody else. So I so my left midfield is slightly different and Kirky needs to advise me on this because I was between two Estonians. I was between uh, Jules Lewis, who had obviously played at Annadale for a while before that as well, and Mark Wainwright. Uh, Kirk, I don't know when Wainers played. I know he played the whole way through me, but he did seem to have massive longevity in there through the end of the 2000s. I mean, he, he did. just was the ultimate club player for me. I mean, Wainers True. just seemed to keep everything together. When you know, and I mean this because I was probably part of it, but when everything was exploding and Cookie was giving it sick and we were giving it sick, Mark just kept the whole thing on the level and. Yeah. He was one again, another one of those guys that was just seven, eight out of ten every week. He was fit, he did box to box, he just never gave up. But the other thing about Mark was he left it all on the pitch. I mean, the minute you left the dugout and went to the car park, the game was forgotten about. And Mark was like, Right, you know, that I mean, hockey is hockey. And, and I thought he had a, I mean, a fantastic attitude on that. Uh, the other one then for me at centre is, is an absolute no-brainer. I coached him from 16s, 18s, 21. Mark Robinson was absolute class act. I mean, his first touch was absolutely sublime. He was hard as nails in there. He was your typical centre midfielder that the ball went into with three men around you and the way you went and turned. And, and, and he was excellent in there uh, for Garvey and for any team that I coach throughout. You know, again, another guy who was the nicest guy off the pitch you could ever meet. The minute that the game was over, he was he was done and that was it. Uh, and the final one for me then is again, I suppose I'm putting in my own spoke here, but I think you, or I think Stevie talked earlier about somebody who had played, who was it Stevie you were saying, had played Godfrey. I think the only one, the, the, the interesting stat between Godfrey would be Godfrey and Peter Bland. Who played the longest at that top level? Now you know, Paddy, you were showing me stuff last night. Of you know, Blandy made those Ulster teams in the mid two thousands. They easily made those Ulster teams. Uh, but Blandy played. Blandy played with me back in ninety two, ninety three, and was still playing up the last year. So you know, or two years ago. So that is that's a head. Now he had more clubs than Debbie Ballesteros. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but that was through work and through different friendship groups and so on and so on, and he moved about. But in, in, in the majority of cases, was playing 
you know, was playing on top Annandale teams, went to Garvey, went to EHL with Garvey. Uh, but, you know, when they went to one of those first EHL, came back to us and really contributed something in, in his late 30s and early 40s, which just held us together when we were going through a few, you know, rough patches. So I think it'd be very hard to, for me to overlook somebody who, who gives so much to my club, but also when you look at the contribution to the game, the club game in Ulster, over the years, that that the you know the Blandy would be in there for me on that one too. So uh, it would be uh, Mark Wayne Wright, Mark Robinson, Peter Bland. For me, uh, uh, assuming that I'm allowing uh, Ross McCannis to get into the back four, and I had Stuarty Smith up front. So that, that's my caveat on that one. So okay. there you go. Okay. Um, a, a lot of the names that I had have already been mentioned. Um, I had John Peter Bland down, I had John Mark Wayne Wright down, I had John Mark Robinson down. Um, although didn't pick him in the end because I'm not sure around longevity, certainly ability. He had oh, he had it in abundance. Um, Stuart Smith and Mark Crooks are also one of my list, but more as forwards. Um, two that haven't been mentioned that that didn't actually make my three, but are worthy of mention. I think would be Michael Hart. Played for a long, yep. long time yep. and uh, was a top player, a top, top player and a, and a, and a smashing bloke as well. Um, and the other one was that I always felt was a good competitor was Agro Chris Campbell. Um, mm-hmm. Played for a few clubs and was always somebody who was on a team sheet at whatever club he, he was at. Um, but my three, um, William Robinson. Um, I know more as a midfielder, and certainly when he came through as a youngster, at Inst, he broke into an Inst team that contained a lot of quality players. And I, I always thought he was somebody who performed at a good level week in, week, week, in, week out. Probably in his early days, a wee bit of a hothead at times, um, but certainly developed himself into essentially becoming the heartbeat of that Instonians team probably over the last three, four, five years. Um, my second one uh, was Scott McCandless. Um, I've seen him more as a thing. I, I think probably from he played for Banbridge in, for first in the year 2000. And in 2014-15, when Banbridge won all the trophies, um, he uh, he was still at, at, at the centre of midfield in that team. And a fantastic competitor, an absolute menace on the pitch and an absolute disaster to play with because if you weren't giving your all you knew it verbally and uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe physically at times as well but certainly would be somebody that I would have on the team. Um, the third one in my midfield um, and I would I would actually go as far to say he's the best player never to play for Ireland would be Julian Lewis. Um, he was the same age as me at school and from yeah. a young age his first touch, his technical ability on the ball was second to none. And he's somebody that, you know, even in the latter part of, of the sort of 2000s when Ents got in trouble or they needed somebody a bit different, he seemed to get a phone call. He was like, he was like the A team that Ents turned to, you know. And uh, it, it would be, honestly, would be the first, in terms of the, the players I played with, he'd be one of the first names in the team sheet. So that'll be Gillian Lewis, William Robinson, and Scott McCandless. Right, we have Stuart Smith, Robbo is, is Mark Robinson, uh, Will Annette, Gillian Lewis, Blandy, uh, Wainwright, the other Robbo, William, and Scott McCandless for three positions. Um, well, I'm sorry, can I just jump in back? I, I, I mean, I, I know I'm jumping ahead of myself, but I mean, I had Bill Ahmed. I, I always saw him as a forward. I mean, yeah, so you know, we my... talked about it last night. Davy, Davy Smith said to me, I mean, David said to me, he says, Andy, I played, he said, I remember being away for weeks playing against the top Dutch boys and the top Germans and the top Pakistanis and driving up the Saturday morning to Kilkenny going, <laughs> Please don't let Bill Allen be playing for Kilkenny <laughs> today. You know, I mean, everybody, everybody, and it was as bad as that. He was wild. It was just so hard to handle, and he broke yeah. our hearts and on, on numerous occasions. But if you had have said to me, I mean, I know Stevie's Stevie's trying to squeeze him in there and, and fair play in at left midfield. But I don't know about you, Paddy or Chris, but I would have saw him as an out and out. You know. I, I, I I, I, did, I I did see him as a forward, uh, yeah. but I just felt that he did occasionally just drop into that. Oh, I. 
Go up to the water. There. And yeah. I suppose whenever my whenever you see my forward line, you'll see. Uh, <laughs> I, I couldn't I couldn't get him in there, but yeah, yeah. I I, I, I think it would be it would be a shame if someone like Bill Annett didn't didn't get in this team because yeah, he, has, he has won it. He's won it, uh, you know, with his home club at Kilkeel, um, yeah. and and probably. You know, we're naming all the top teams o- over the years. What what team would Bill Annett not have not have made? No, every team. No, he would. No. Yeah. 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 Well, well, listen. In terms of him, I mean, uh, I had him as a f- on the forward list. Um, yeah. Had Stuart Smith on the forward list as well. So, I mean, if we get a consensus, if if have three of us sort of got Bill Annett more as a forward. Well, I have an as a forward in my team, definitely. I mean, unorthodox. Yeah, right. What a player! What a player! Um, right. Well, impossible well, to mark. Can, 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 well, I think I think if a couple of us at least had had, had Robbo. I, I think most of us had Robbo. Uh, the, mark Mark the, Robinson. The, 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 yeah. The the, the 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 Julian Lewis one, I I would be totally fine with it. Cla- so would I, hundred percent. Clark there, and. Because I, you know, I, I know the the amount of forward. Sturdy, Sturdy plays his best stuff at right midfield. Okay. okay. I, I don't think anybody's been mentioned would be as handy as, as Sturdy at right midfield. Uh, so, I, I I would be saying that could that would that be your midfield? Yeah. Everyone met. Everyone mentioned Robbo as a mark. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Him in. I think that's. Uh, I think he's in. Smith, Lewis, and Robinson. I would have no issues with that, Stevie. I think yeah. that's a, I think that's a, that's a pretty strong midfield for me. Any particular? Does it matter where they're playing? I, I, I think, I think. Robbo in the middle. Rob, well, J- Julian, Julian could easily play at left midfield. Yeah, yeah. easily. Right, Chris. Oh. Forward line, please. Okay. Forward line. Um, Firstly, uh, first name Chris Barnes. Um, <laughs> Barnesy to me has to make this team. Um, he has been playing for years um, in the league. For again, played for for different clubs, um, but I think he was at his best when he was playing for Estonians. I think one season he scored fifty five goals in one season, um, and yet I mean his drive flicking was 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 Thomas, and he was probably if you think probably the first real. Person I can remember drag flicking, you know, I know um, the likes of Mark Clay, Corn, Ian Hamilton, but Chris Barnes, I from what I remember, was the, was the first person I remember seeing drag flick the ball, and then obviously Hamilton and Clay Corns all came after. Um, but his finishing um, on the reverse was just in training is just unbelievable from really tight angles. He just put the ball anywhere in the net. He you know, obviously, for a bigger fella, he actually was quite quick off the mark. So he was tricky in the circle. He just sat in the, st- stood in the circle and just quickly dar- dashes. And he would, he'd be quicker than you think. Um, and he would he just knows how, he knows where the net is. Um, and he came back and uh, he joined the Stonians again for, his, I think, his third go, uh, two and a half seasons ago and played half a season with us. Um, and even at that, he just stood in the circle. And he still... Bagged a load of goals, and um, he is to me the best, best goal scorer, um, the league's ever seen. And that would be my statement. That my second name would be William Annette, who we've just discussed about from Kikil. Um, I think it's nice to see some from outside all of the bigger clubs as such getting the getting on the teams. But with William Annette, I mean, left just on the left, whether it was left midfield or left wing, he just stood on the left hand side and held that stick with one hand at times and just. Very unorthodox, incredibly different to Mark, but so fast. I mean, I don't think people realise how fast that guy was. Once he got going down that left hand side, there was no stopping him, and he scored a couple of unbelievable goals against us. Um, so he and I, I know, I know, we as in a club try to approach him times to try and sign for us, but uh, he, he never left. And he stayed loyal. So um, I like that about him that he's only going to play for one club. He's one club man. Um, so when that gets a meeting. Um, the last one was incredibly difficult. Um, you know, 
I was thinking Ian Hamilton, Greg Allen, Mark Daniels just mentioned, um, Dame Ward, one of the most decorated Ulster Hockey League players out there. But Andy Williamson, for me, um, now Andy, I think, started his career at, at Annadale um, and has progressed. And I think only within the last, and I, he probably gets my pick, um, where he's probably done most damage is in, is in IHL 1, where he just seems to constantly score. Very good player. I think understated as well. Because, um, <laughs> again, he's playing, against a lot of, playing with a lot of very good international players. But the Andy Wimber sheet um, seems a real nice lad. So, um, yeah, I, 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 any time I watch Andy Willis, and I think how, I always wonder how he hasn't uh, been capped at, at international level. Um, so that would be my three. So it would be Chris Barnes, William Annette, and Andy Williamson. All right. Cheers, Craigie. All right. Is it me? Andy, yeah. Uh, so my three, I mean, the, I think the, the interesting one, I coached them both from the under-16, and, and uh, I think they were, they're either a year apart or they were close in any age, but the old Hamilton versus Barnes one was always an absolute classic. And, and there's no there's no surprise to see that I'm going to come down on the side of Ian. Uh, purely and simply because, actually, the same reasons as Kirk, you give that, that Hammers didn't move back and forward depending on, you know, where he was playing. He stuck it out at Annadale and at the very top. And again, Stevie's point earlier about those guys who, who stayed through and came through. You know, Ian had his, uh, you know, a bit like Stuart we were talking about earlier, you know, you, you forgive him his defensive work and so on and so on. But, I mean, he, three years in the trot, I think some Sato can probably fix me on this, but three years in the trot, over 50 goals a season in the Premier League. It was just ridiculous. I mean, it wasn't once. It wasn't when the league was weaker. It wasn't this. It was not. It was at the very top when we were winning. And, and there were so many games where, you know, Stevie talks earlier about how good we were at times, but there were other games where we were shocking. And next thing you were 2-0 up. You were 3-0 up because he just put, put two or three corners into the net and the whole game opened up. So, you know, for me, you know, for me, Ian, you know, if you're looking at somebody who has contributed to the club game in Ulster and contributed to one team doing something, I mean, there was no question of it that, you know, that Hammers, was he, I work with both of them, was he as natural a finisher as Chris? Probably not in around the circle. He seemed to give himself far more chances. I mean, you know, he would have missed two, three and then stuck two or three in the net. But his corner prowess, uh, along with everything else, was just was as good as I'd seen. There's absolutely and under real pressure. I mean, last minute of the game, sort of stuff. Not not when you were four or five nil up. Uh, Bill Annett, for me, was talked about earlier, and I've already told the story about we used to even when we were at our best, we used to absolutely be frightened, frightened of, of, of Bill in there. Uh, and the third one for me was a real debate because. Not sure I could handle Bill Annett and Willie Edgar uh, around the same thing. Now, Willie, I know, sniffed around that Irish team for a while when Andrew Meredith was about and he was close. He asked him, Willie was probably at his best for us at the club where he was quick, he was unorthodox, he was scoring bags of goals. Uh, but I think if you were looking at somebody to say, right, would this guy have got into our team at the very, very height? I mean, the one that we always used to talk about also was Greg Allen. Uh, and I would put Greg above him. I just think technically as a hockey player, and he just, he always had the potential, I felt, to break our hearts a wee bit uh, at times. And uh, certainly when I look back through my notes, Greg is one of those ones that appears consistently for us. Keep an eye on Greg Allen, guys. Would you please keep an eye on Greg Allen? And the next thing, Greg, Greg Allen scores two in lots of games. So for me, it would be Greg, it would be Hammers, and it would be Bill Annett. With Willie just probably missing out in there and, and, and no more. Okay. Um, How many times is Dean Ward in your forward line? He, he, he's not, I find this particularly tough. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I had a list which seemed to go on and on and on and on, and I, I didn't really know where to stop. I mean, a lot of them have been mentioned before. Certainly, Two of my mates at Bambridge, Dame Ward and Simon McGann, were yeah. at their own time exceptional players at that level. Yeah. Um, 
Mark Cricks at Crickstown has been somebody who's featured in team talks and that I kind of play or coach for a long, long time. It's somebody with immense ability. Um, probably like a few of the Crickstown ones knew that we sort of pushed to go to the next level and it sort of never came. Um, Chris Barnes, again, was somebody that I, I admired whilst often in disbelief. The amount of goals he scored from never moving from more than five metres square, you know, it was unbelievable. Um, Ian Hamilton was phenomenal um, at a particular period in time and certainly from corners. Um, the three I went with, right, two of whom have been mentioned already, uh, Bill Allen at, at Kilkeel was, as Andy said, when you were driving to Kilkeel to play them, the number one thing was, geez, I hope he's not playing today. And that's everybody in the country thought that because when he got going, he just was unplayable. And Banbridge yeah. for a number of years, when I was a player and a coach, we struck that was our nemesis going to kill Kale. And when he came into the team, it became even worse. Um, so he certainly would be one of mine. Um, the other person that would definitely be in my team is Andy Williamson. I think of late. I agree with Kirky 100%. He probably is the standout name of late that you think with the amount of Irish caps going about, this guy hasn't had a cap. Maybe it's because of his quiet, sort of unassuming nature and he just goes about job. But he has been consistently a, a key name in Garvey's team sheet over a long, long period of time whenever they have been at the, at the very top of Irish hockey. So he, he certainly would be, be on my list. The third one I had down, and actually I have to admit, when I started writing names, he was the first person I put down, was Chris Kirk. Chris Kirk, somebody that <laughs> honestly was in every team talk we played in. Uh, the, the amount of natural ability he had, you know, but, uh, you know, definitely would be in my team. Somebody who, as he'll tell you, whenever I was certainly a player at Bambridge and a coach, numerous Bambridge coaches phoned Kirk. He was number one on the hit list to, to get to Bambridge and it never happened. Um, but he's been somebody that probably has played the majority of the last 20 years. And I think, you know, performing at the level he does, that's not to be underestimated. And so my three would be Chris Kirk, Bill Annette, and Andy Williamson. Sorry. Okay. David. Okay, well, my, my, my front three has now changed. Because, <laughs> um, because Bill Annette didn't get into it at midfield. So I, 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 I don't think we, we could pick a team and not have Bill Annett in it. Um, so he, he's, he's going to be on, on, on left wing uh, for, 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 for me. Um, listen, I, I've mentioned before, just, just a class player. And whenever, you know, obviously we've all been about the game a lot. And, you know, why, why didn't Bill Annett get capped? You know, you know that's... Is it because just surely he was playing at a at, at, at a team that maybe wasn't constantly at, at the top of the league? So I, I do always think it's a, it's a shame whenever players like that who, who do uh, play their whole time at, 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 at a club and, and and do get overlooked. So I, I do think it's, it's, it's a real shame that, that Bill Annett did, didn't get booked at. And... Um, I, I'm exactly with, with Andy on this here. Whenever it comes to the to the Barnsley Hamilton uh, discussion, um, l listen, these were two guys that constantly would hurt you, um, and we, we we need people in the, in this in this team that that, that are going to score goals uh, and constantly score goals, and I, I I don't think there's room for both of them in the team. Um, Barnsley, Barnsley's the only player I ever think I've coached against that I've told defenders to keep him on their strong, keep him on a strong side, okay? Because he was so so good on his reverse, uh, and then his corner prowess was was obviously was was, was class. Um, but I, listen, I don't think you can look look past uh, Ian Hamilton. The guy won it five times. He, um, he he just he just scored goals for fun. Whenever they were handing out that newsletter, top goal scorer of the year, and actually, I need to give a shout out to Nigel McCulloch who helped me with with a few of my stats. 
Uh, okay. he, he obviously kept the goal scores over all those years. And Hamilton was was constantly in and around when in, when in that. So ha Hammers would be my centre forward. And then someone just playing in behind Anat and, and Hammers. And I'm serious, guys. If this guy does not make this team, I'm going to throw the toys out of the brown. <laughs> Is 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 Greggy Allen? Um, whenever I took over as coach, Greggy went went straight into the team as a starter. He started every single game I ever coached, and was a guy that whenever we needed something to happen, I was looking to see where where Greggy was, and I would even have to shift him around the pitch at times just to solve problems. Okay, so maybe we're having a problem on a certain side of the pitch or something like that there. I would move Greggy over there and he, he would solve that problem. He scored over 200 goals in, 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 the, in, in the Premier League uh, or, or in senior hockey. He scored 50 in one year. And the amount of corners he has won, the way, how smart he can set up a press, just out and out. Class player also was one of five times. Uh, so, so my three would be Bellinet, Ian Hamilton, and Greggy Allen. But the, the big point would be that Greggy Allen would have to be in the team. Stevie, I'm with you. I'll back you on that one. You and me together. <laughs> <laughs> we have Bellinet is in because all four of you wanted him. It looks like it's. Uh, it's a Barnes v. Hamilton and a Williamson v. Allen. Well, listen, I would have no problem with, with Greggy Allen. I mean, Greggy Allen's a, a damn good player. I, I would have no problem as well with Ian Hamilton. And I, I think everybody's agreed that Bill Annette should be the other one. But I, I'd have no problem with them at all, you know. Can I, can, I mean, Steve, I know Well, you've got, you've got two keepers and three forwards really here to answer these. I, I don't know what Chris's view and Stevie's view is, but... For me, I always, I mean, if you take the Greg versus Andy thing, and I, I mean, I work with Andy Williamson a lot and, and know his game. I, I thought Greg could have made goals out of things. Uh, I felt Andy finished goals off, if that made sense. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's easy. I don't mean it's, it's easy, it's not easy. I don't mean that to be. You can stand the back post and tap a ball in the reverse stick. You can slide in for a corner quite easily. I, I just felt Greg, you 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 looked around and you lost him for one second and and it was it, it was in. Uh, or he was putting something in with an upright volley in the reverse or he was doing something daft that way, you know, which was far, far harder to handle. What whereas, you know, I was probably a beneficiary when I was playing of letting other people do the work. You stand in around the, the six yards and you tap the ball into the net. Not the skill on its own do. But I think that's where Greg pips it for me slightly. It's just the fact he made more goals in there, you know. Maybe any thoughts on that one? No, from I, the I, I, I would agree. Andy Williamson's the guy that's diving in on his hands yeah. and knees, you know, trying to deflect something in, uh, you know, just scrapping for goals. I think Greggy's just that different type of player. That's why I would play him sort of just off those front two of, of Hammers and Annette, uh, creating <coughs> scoring as well. And, you know, the, you know Hammers, uh, I think, she is our, our, our drag in this team. Uh, so I think we need, maybe need to look, look, look at that as, 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 as well. But, uh, no, I think, I think Greggy just, 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 just peps Andy Williamson for me. Yeah, I'm just checking. Will Annette, is Hammers in this? I think so. I don't think... Well, he would be for me. He I, I would for know. me. Chris? Just, 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 just Pep's Barnsley. Yeah. And, and probably the only reason he Pep's Barnsley is because he, at the end of the day, we still need to be able to defend in the forward line here. And I think, I think Hammers does that better than Barnsley. I didn't mean it either. I'm defending at all. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, l l listen. Hammers was on my list, and so was Greg Allen. I mean, Greg Allen's been a, a great servant to Cookstown. So I let him. Um, 
very happy that, that, that he can make the top three. Um, I mean, but Hamilton Barnes, I don't think there's much difference between them. They're both fantastic goal scorers. Um, but yeah, so I think if one makes a team, one makes the bench. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair enough. Hammers is down. Hammers is down more than Barnsley, so Hammers is in. I can't believe Chris Barnes didn't make his team cricket. I know, I know. I mean, like, he was the first strike figure, too. I mean, uh, anyway, I agreed there. Greg, so is this Greg Allenover Williamson? I would. Well, that may be my view. Yeah, that's fair enough. Right, uh, big man then. <laughs> he stole your dummy, Kirby. <laughs> Hello. I've seen you spit those out a few times at Sean Brown. He's got a temper like his daddy. <laughs> right. Our 11 is Johnny Moore, Stevie Arbuthnet, Ian Hutchison, Ross McCandless, Ewan Butler, Stuart Smith, uh, Robbo, that's Mark, Julian Lewis, Greg Allen. Hammers, you know, and Bellinette. So, fair enough. No, I mean, I've got Robbo, Johnny Gray, uh, Bart Barnes, Landy, Irwin, Crooks. No, Cookie's not in this. Well, Blandy and Godfrey need to be in it. Yeah. Over 20, yeah, uh, purely from a contrib. Yeah, it's not you know, to contribute so much over twenty five years. Is, is I know, but I, I, I'm not, I mean, can you disagree in this? But I mean, I I, I, mean, I love yeah. Blandy and Mitchell stuff, and I think he's been a superb from. But you know, he has chopped and changed clubs so many times. I mean, yeah, no, I, no, I agree. And I, and, and I can't have someone on my team or my squad who does that. Personally. But you have Barnsley. You Barnsley enough, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Bar- Barnsley was instant service. <laughs> service and only a oh, two clubs. Love it, love it. Love Robert, <coughs> Johnny Gray, Barnes, Andy Irwin, Andy. Well, Andy Williamson. Uh, Andy Williamson. Yeah, Williamson has to be. Uh, uh, yeah, Williamson has to be. Uh, Seventeen. So we need to put Davy Buck in as our eighteenth, so we can bring. Oh, yeah, bring it. It's an eighteen-man squad. Eighteen-man squad. 